Bon dia! I'm Paka and this is going to be a process video of how I made this wall hanging. For this piece I'm only going to use a few simple supplies. Acrylic paint, a brush, 10 count interval canvas, size 18 tapestry needle, 4 ply acrylic yarn. So for big pieces I usually have a pretty good idea of what I want them to look like and I start by drawing them out on Procreate because it's so much easier to draw them freely instead of jumping straight into pixel art. When I have an illustration I'm happy with, I export it to PNG and import it to Pixel Studio. On Pixel Studio they have a very handy feature called um, reference so I pull up my image as a reference on another layer and I start basically tracing over it with pixels. This is a great idea for artists who are just starting with pixel art or they are not really into learning it just to make a cross stitch pattern. What I found is that you can work much faster on pixel art apps than on programs made specifically for cross stitch patterns. When you're done, you can look at your pattern straight from the Pixel Studio app by turning on the grid, or you can use other programs to convert it into a cross stitch pattern. I usually only do this when the design is bigger than 100 by 100 stitches. And for that I use Stitch Fiddle. It's an online app and it's pretty much free to use. Uh, this will give you a pattern with a grid, 5x5 and 10x10 guides which makes the pattern a lot easier to read, resulting in less mistakes on your cross stitch. I really like this design on a purple background, but I didn't really want to stitch that much in. It would take me way too long and end up being too heavy. So the next best thing is to paint the canvas. And this is where the acrylic paint comes in. Although this took way longer than I expected, around 4 hours or so, it only took that long because I didn't put enough water on the paint and that would make the canvas absorb it a lot better. I also have the world's tiniest brush, so it took me a long time. <laughs> then painting it, I put it aside until the next day because it was late and my back was killing me. I decided to start with the snake part because it will make it easier for me to figure out the size that this thing is going to take on the canvas. Now it was days and days stitching, can't tell you how many hours, but I started on January and I finished it in March. One to five hours a day, some days I didn't stitch at all. So this is day two of stitching. Tomorrow I have the whole day, so probably I can do three more of them. It's the end of day three of stitching. Today I did this shape, this one, and that one. So people are always asking other artists that annoying question, where do you get your inspiration from? And I would say just draw stuff that bothers you. It's difficult to think about the good things in life, but if I ask you what things you hate, I'm pretty sure you'll have your answer very quickly. And this piece is about something I truly hate. The idea pops into my head a couple of hours after I was called a bitch. Whenever I'm walking to work at 6am in the morning and it's dark out, you better believe my hands are in my pockets, gripping my house keys. That is because over here people like to drink quite a lot, and it's not rare to come across drunk men, or sober even, that bother you. And I'm just always so terrified of what might happen to me. If you are a girl, I'm guessing you do the same as me when a man starts catcalling you. You just look ahead and try to ignore it. Pretend he's not talking to you or that you can't hear him because the alternative will be to tell him to shut the fuck up 
and you know the consequences of that. After all, I'm just a woman with weak arms and short legs and I can either run far or fast. So after these two men tried to get my attention and followed me for quite some time, they got upset that I didn't acknowledge them and they said, You are not even pretty, you fucking bitch. This usually means that they will leave you alone, so I was relieved about that. But then this encounter just kept replaying on my mind the whole morning at work. So when that happens, I try to come up with a visual representation of what I'm feeling. So this bunny came to me, scared, already affected by the predator around him, spikes all over him, unable to move because he's only the prey, and the predator is in every single direction. Now you might wonder why I would want this memory on my wall. Because if it's on my wall, it's not on my mind. And I just turned this ugly encounter into a beautiful piece that I can look at every day and share with you. So I finished this, well I didn't finish it, I still have to do the spikes all over it, but last night I was experimenting with doing the border, I was quite happy with it, what I did is I just folded a bit of the canvas to the back and then I did a whip stitch all the way to there, but I made a terrible mistake. Is I cut it, I had to cut it right there so I can fold it and then fold it like that and then do the border on that side. 
So I was doing the same thing down here and I followed the line to here and I wanted to count nine squares down so I could fold it right there and still have a little bit of space here. And then I was distracted and I cut right next to the right where it when it where it ends <laughs> right there so now I have to fix this fix this somehow so sexy this looks professional as hell I might be finished with it today because I have to do all around the, the snake and the bunny as well